Hello and welcome to another Notch tutorial. This tutorial is on basic procedurals. We're going to start by adding a procedural root node to the node graph and we'll connect it up to the main root node. We're going to add a 3D primitive node, which will connect to the procedural root. Then if we're going to render nodes, we're going to add a procedural meshing node and connect that up to the procedural root. To see what's happening better in the viewport, change the viewport shading options to show normals. So we've generated our spherical mesh. As you can see, the mesh has holes around it. This is because we have to increase the size of the bounding box on the mesh. We can do this by adding a bounding box to the root node and connecting it either up to the main root node or to the 3D primitive itself. Once I've connected it up to the procedural meshing node, you can see if I move it about, you can see the sphere gets curled where it's not inside the box. If I increase the scale of the bounding box and turn on wireframe, you can see the accuracy of the bounding box gets less as you increase the scale. So if you click on the procedural meshing node, we can change the widths and the height and the depth resolution to 512, which will increase the mesh density. We'll now copy and paste the 3D mesh primitive and connect it up to the procedural node. As you can see, we've now got two spherical meshes in the scene. The two spheres are fused together. The primitives are merged together using a Boolean operation. If we switch to Smooth Union, the fusion is much softer. We can also change our 3D primitive. Let's change it to a torus shape. Now if we go to Subtract Union, the torus will be subtracted from the sphere. And I'll change the smoothing union to smooth subtract. And you can see it's a lot smoother. If you dial up and down the blending weight, you can see how smooth it becomes. Another thing that's important is the vertical alignment of the nodes. Depending on where the nodes are aligned, it changes the hierarchy of the node and what gets cold from what. So it's really important that you make sure your nodes are aligned correctly on the node graph. So if we zoom into the mesh, you can see that the surface isn't very clean. In order to correct this, we need to go to the Mesh Render options and increase the smoothing iteration on the surface. And this will make the smoothing of the surface softer. So let's add another 3D primitive to the scene. So we'll copy and paste one of the original 3D primitives. We'll turn that into a cube. making sure that it's connected up to the procedural route rather than the main route. Now you can see we've got a 3D cube within the bounding box. And we're going to enlarge it. Now you can see that the enlarged cube is coming outside the bounding box. So we only get like the top surface showing. So if we go to procedural meshes and we turn on seal boundaries, that will draw the rest of the box that's inside the bounding box and not just the top surface. Then we'll move the original 3D primitives down into it and connect those using a smooth union. And you can see now that the box is connected to the two other primitives. We'll add a math modifier to this and we'll plug that into the y-axis and you can see the torus is now moving up and down. We can modify the speed of this by changing the speed and the scale. You can see the animation is now slower as it moves up and down on the sphere. If you copy and paste the math modifiers you can plug them into other inputs on the 3D primitive. We're going to plug them into the bank, pitch and heading. And this will rotate 
the torus on different axes. So when it animates, it animates in a quite a random way. And then you can just slow this or speed it up using the speed modifier. Now we've got some quite interesting sort of movements of the torus within the sphere. We're now going to add a fractal noise node to the scene and hook it up to the node graph. You can see that it's distorting the cube's mesh, which gives us quite an interesting effect. If we move the fractal noise node about, it will add distortion over the whole mesh inside the bounding box. If you notice, it's also only affecting the 3D primitives that are below the fractal noise on the node graph. Let's look at changing the fractal noise node from 3D fast noise to 4D noise. If we increase the gain on the mesh, more mesh detail will fill the area inside the bounding box. As we increase the gain, small artifacts will appear as holes all over the mesh. In order to correct this, we need to increase the error tolerance on the procedural meshing node. Select the node, go up to error tolerance, and then move that up and down and you'll see that the errors disappear on the mesh. Let's look at changing the fusion mode of the fractal noise. If we change it to subtract mode, the fractal noise will subtract it from all of the other nodes that are above it on the node hierarchy. Now we can see the fractal noise is affecting the torus and the sphere only. If we move the fractal noise under all the other 3D primitives, they'll all be affected by the fractal noise. Now we can play the animation to see what it looks like. I'm going to add a null node to the scene. Nulls are a great way of parroting nodes. Anything that is a child of the null will be affected by whatever's affecting the null and its hierarchy on the node graph. Add a null node to the scene. Hook it up to the 3D primitive. Then we'll hook the null up to the fractal noise. Then the null will be hooked up to the procedural route. You can see it's made a copy of the sphere. And we have the fractal noise only appearing on the sphere. We can modify the merging of this new object directly in the merging options on the null. Because the fractal noise is a child of the null, it will only affect the 3D primitives that are also children of that null. So if you move the children of the null up and down, they don't affect the hierarchy in the scene. Only the hierarchy of the null in the scene will affect the other 3D primitives in the scene. Because everything is now connected up through the null, by modifying the size of the null, all of the nodes connected to it will be scaled and modified in the same way. This is the end of the basic procedurals tutorial. Thank you for listening and hope to see you in the next Notch tutorial.